Hello, my name is Laure Elmeguizon, or Dr. H, and I will guide you through this example where we start from the ages of 19 randomly chosen students from Mass 1041. We will produce a five number summary by hand and using R, and I will remind you how we do this exactly. Then we'll try to find outliers. Again, we'll do it by hand and using R, and we'll produce a box plot by hand and using R. At this point, you may be wondering why we do it by hand, because R can do it for us. The reason is that there is a lot of understanding to be gained from doing it by hand. In particular, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you don't know exactly what goes to the end of the whiskers when we do a box plot. Now, sometimes it's really painful to do things by hand, like for the standard deviation, and in that case, we'll be using R only. The first question asks us to produce a five number summary of this data. Okay, so what's a five number summary? The idea of a five number summary is that you're trying to split your data into four groups of approximately equal size. And the numbers which achieve that form the five number summary because it's actually a list of five numbers. The first one is the minimum value in your data set. The second one is called Q1, the first quartile, and the name is well chosen because a quarter of the data are smaller than Q1. Q2 is a number you usually know under the name the median because that's the one that split your data into basically 50% on one side and 50% on the other side. And the reason the second quartile comes from the fact that there are two quarters of the data below this one. Then there's the third quartile where three quarters of the data are below it. And finally, the maximum value. So this list of five numbers is what we call a five number summary. And now let's do it. The first thing we do is to find the median, meaning that we're trying to split this group of 19 numbers into two groups of equal size. Well, 19 is odd, so that's impossible. But the closest thing we can do is to put nine numbers on one side, nine numbers on the other side, and then there will be a middle number, which will be the median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine numbers there nine numbers there, and that's my median, which is also the second quartile. Please note that we do not get the five numbers of the five number summary from smallest to largest. You need to start by the median. So then what you want to do is to split again the groups you have there in half. And the doubt you may have is, is that the group I need to split in half or should I include the median? Well, the answer is there. If there is an odd number of observation, the middle one, the median, is used twice. Once to compute Q1 and once to compute Q3. That means if I want to get the first quartile, this is what I'm looking at. Now I have 10 values. So if I want to split my 10 value into two equal groups, what I'm gonna do is one, two, three, four, five. This is where my value is, and in that case, the quartile is going to be the average of these two numbers. Well, the average of 19 and 19 is fairly easy to calculate. Same thing for the upper half of the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is where the break should be, 5 number on either side. And again, I'm going to average the two value to get my third quartile, which will have to be 22.5. We are now ready to write down our five number summary. So the first number is the minimum value, that's 18. Then the first quartile is 19. Of course, I'm getting it from here. The median is going to be 20. My third quartile is 22.5. And the maximum value in this data set is 29. The second part of this question is to produce the same five number summary, but this time using R. So the first thing you need to do is to combine all your numbers, the C's for combine, into just one object, which you called H. And then you use an instruction called five num for five number summary for H. 
and you get exactly what we had earlier. That's the minimum value. Then you get the first quartile. Then you get the median. Then the third quartile. And finally, the maximum value. We have to warn you, you will have a few surprises when you compute the quartiles because there are at least nine different rules to compute them. In practice, it will probably be unimportant because this time we're doing a five number summary using a very small data set. But it's not unusual instead that you will do that with thousands and thousands of value. And in that case, the quantiles you get are so close it makes no difference. And anyway, in the context of a course, usually since there are several accepted definitions, write whatever you got with your software and it's going to be counted correct. Let's move on to question two. We need to find if there are any suspected outliers. And it's related to the five number summary, but how exactly do we do that? There's no clear-cut answer, uh, but we're going to follow the textbook and use what is called the 1.5 time interquartile range criteria to find if something is an outlier. What it really says is if it's too far away from the other value, there's something strange about this value. One way to think about that is to have a box plot in mind. So if that's my box plot, that's the first quartile, that's the median, and that's the third quartile. The interquartile range is the width of this box. It measures spread. And the way to calculate this, the interquartile range can be obtained by taking the third quartile and subtracting the first one. So you then multiply this quantity by uh, 1.5 and you add that to the third quartile and you get some value. Let's say it's here. Anything which is beyond that value, so anything here, would be considered a suspected outlier. Then you take the exact same thing, so that's my, so this value there, sorry, let me write this. So that's gonna be Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So this distance there is, is uh, 1.5 times the interquartile range. You draw it on the other side, so 1.5 times the interquartile range. Here, you will get some value again, which will be the first quartile minus 1.5, the interquartile range. And same thing, anything on this side will be considered too far away from um, the rest of the value, so it deserved being taken a look at, and that's why we call them suspected outliers. We are now ready to find the suspected outliers for the ages of students. So we know that any value above the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile will be a suspected outlier. So the first thing we do is to calculate the thresholds. The interquartile range is the third quartile minus the first one, namely 22.25 minus 19 which is 3.5. So now the lower limit for outliers will be Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So we calculate this. It's going to be 19 minus 1.5 times 3.5, and that is 13.75. Anything below 13.75 is a suspected outlier. So where is that? So the thing is, my 13.75 is somewhere here, and there is nothing below. So we can see that there's no lower suspected outlier. We now do the same thing for the upper outliers. So the upper threshold for outliers is the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. That is 22.5 plus 1.5 times 3.5, and that is 27.75. So where does that lie? 27.75 would be here. So really that is third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And as we said, anything above that would be considered a suspected outlier. So we found one. 29 is a suspected outlier. 
So 20 now is a suspected upper outlier and there's no suspected lower outlier. Maybe we could add upper. For those of you who would like to look at the final version of a typed solution, you can just pause the video. We now want to find the suspected outliers, but this time we want to use the software R. So, um, because in practice the data won't always be ordered for you, I've been using the same numbers, but I mixed them up a little bit. See, I didn't do much. Basically, this 25 used to be there and this 18 used to be at the beginning. So the first thing you will do is to combine all your numbers into one object and you give it a name. So I called it H. You ask R to calculate the five number summary of that object and you will get those numbers. This is the minimum. So the second number on the list is the first quartile. So that's what I did here. So let Q1 be the second number from this five number summary list. This means aside to Q1 this value. So the third quartile is the fourth element on the list. So I stored the result into Q3. Now, in order to calculate the lower outlier threshold, same calculation as before, I take Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range and I store the result in a variable called lower outlier threshold and same thing for the upper one. I've combined them into one single object so I could print them into one single line. So you recognize the 27.75, anything above that is an upper outlier. And you also recognize the 13.75 and any number below that will be a lower outlier. Once you've done that, you can sort your data to put it in increasing order and then finish just the way we did by hand. Anything below 13.75 will be a lower suspected outlier, so there's none. And anything above 27.75 would be a suspected upper outlier. So of course we get the same conclusion that 29 is a suspected outlier. Here is another way to find the suspected outliers using R. So the beginning is exactly the same. You calculate the two thresholds, but then you add this command. So is age greater than the upper outlier threshold? So what I will do, it will take all the numbers in the list one by one and for each of them, it will tell you whether the condition is satisfied. So here it's false for all of them except the last one. So this corresponds to that, which means that age is greater than the 27.75 only for the last one, and the last one is 29. Now you could do the same thing using the lower outlier threshold. And so for each value on the list, you check whether they are less than the lower outlier threshold. And in that case, you can see that the condition is never satisfied. So none of this value is a suspected lower outlier. What you could do at this point, really, this is enough to find that this is 29. But what you could also do is ask R, so which of these values satisfy the condition? The problem, if you do this, it will give you the rank in the list. So there are 19 values, so it will tell you the 19th value is an outlier. So if you want to know what exactly is the 19th value, you need to add that just like before age of two gives you the second on the list. And that way you get directly the outlier you wanted. Below we have the edges of 19 randomly chosen students and we want to summarize the data graphically and we are told to use a box plot. So we remember that the box plot looks like that. Uh, maybe you're not too sure what these dots mean. And we also know that it's somehow obtained from the five number summary. Therefore, the first thing we need to do is to explain how exactly we get the box plot from the five number summary. So there is a box 
and inside the box there is a bar. This bar is the median, it's not the main, you need to find the median. Now the edges of the box are the first quartile and the third quartile. The difficulty is what goes at the end of the whiskers. It's not those values. It really is the smallest value between Q1 and that and the largest value between Q3 and this. In other words, it has to be a value in your data set. So let's do it. We start with the box. So the median is 20, that goes at the center of the box. Then 19 is the first quartile and 22.5 is the third quartile. The height of the box is only for aesthetic reasons. I'm just going one square up. So that's the box. Now the whiskers. So we calculated these numbers earlier. This is 13.75 and this one is 27.75. The end of the lower whisker will be the smallest observation between 13.75 and 19. So 13.75 would be somewhere there. So the smallest observation right above that is 18. So this is how we get this whisker. Now on the other side, we want the largest observation between 22.5, so there, and 27.5, and that's inclusive. Well, 27.75 is not on our list, so the highest we can have is 25. And that's the end of the upper whisker. A very important thing to notice is that this is not 27.75 and this one is not 13.75. We actually have to use one value in our data set that fits between these limits. Now, in case you're wondering what the little circles were, they're the outliers. So we said earlier that there was only one outlier and it's 29. So we represent it with a little circle. And this is it to get our box plot. It's very useful to do it by hand at least once to just get a very clear understanding of what each element in the box plot is. Now, in practice, you really don't do it by hand. So we can ask the same question using the software R. As usual, combine all your numbers into one object, which as usual I've called age. And you can say, I want a box plot of age. Actually, box plot of age would be enough. I wanted it to be horizontal just so it would fit on the page. And this call stands for color. I can decide what color I want. And you can see that the end of the upper whisker is 25. We get this 18 again. And that's our outlier at 29. Just a word of caution about the box plot terminology. Maybe you've seen in the past something called box plot and the end of the whiskers with the minimum and the maximum. The textbooks call those one box plots and they call modified box plots, the one which use the 1.5 interquartile range rule. Well, for us, those are box plots. So in this course, whenever we mean box plots, just like R, we will mean that we're using the 1.5 interquartile rule and that we want the outliers represented by these little circles. Choosing one definition or another really makes a difference. This is the same data we had earlier. You'll recognize our outlier at 29, and this is the shape of the box plot if you use the 1.5 times interquartile range rule for the whiskers, whereas if you use the max and min, then this whisker will look very different. Now, the width of the box is unimportant. Finally, we can use the software R to find the mean and the standard deviation of this data set. First, you combine all your numbers into a variable called h, and to find the mean, it's really easy, mean of h. What you can also do is use a command called summary, which will give you the five number summary, and in addition, it gives you the mean. So a lot of students really like this one because they get everything at once. To get the standard deviation, you use SD of H, so standard deviation of H, and R calculates it for you. 
If later on you want to go back to a specific point in this video, let's say that you're interested in box plots and you want to be reminded of how they work exactly, this means that you should go to 40 minutes 40 seconds in the video and if you want to know how to do them by hand, the place to find that in the video is 15 minutes 21 seconds. Thank you for listening.